Alright guys, it is time for game two of this week's iCast, your freaking awesome replays up here in the top left, representing Winnie the Pooh, it's e -oh. Now there's people out there who are like, Pig, you can't read. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys what you really need right now is a nice tall glass to shut the fuck up. Trust me, that's that says e -oh. I'm not gonna fucking call some a Thor. That's a terrible name. That's stupid. Um, what's not stupid though is e -oh being a no regret fanboy. The thing which I was just saying to people, uh, most people who submitted replays failed the most basic part of the challenge. They forgot to announce who they're a fanboy of at the start of the challenge. So, you know, amazing, amazing. Uh, as always, you guys truly are the uh, most talented gamers in the world. StarCraft 2 players, super elite. You're all very intelligent. And I really appreciate you submitting replays where you're meant to be emulating your favorite pro gamer or streamer. And you forgot to actually tell us which pro gamer or streamer that was. So thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> let's announce the topic we didn't announce it in game one it's game two we just came up with the topic guys if we can activate that one in, in chat again uh basically the challenge is you're playing the game wrong use a build or style from a different matchup to the one you're playing something like going lingbane muta vs protoss you take a zerg vs terran style use it vs protoss you can be as creative with this as you want uh obviously this is basically me just saying hey play out of the box but specifically if you can make it like a style that normally is used versus a different match uh, you can play mech vs protoss right uh protoss could go i mean shit you could do a rotterdam build right you could go mass phoenix like you would in pvp against zerg um you might be like oh that's a normal legit build yeah if you've spent 20 years being a warcraft 3 and starcraft 2 pro gamer whose whole talent is making weird shit work that should never work because he's a fucking wizard he can do it uh yeah sure um speaking of weird shit uh he, he almost said hey i'm a no regret fan he's now bringing two drones to harass I think they're meant to be stacked on top of each. No, it's just a double dickhead. He's doing a double. Oh, one dickhead is going to become thingo. The other dickhead's going into. Is he going to build two hatches? Oh my! It's a slow circling. It's a gasless. He's rallying sixlings. He's building a hatch in the natural, a hatch in the main. E oh! By the way, guys, Corky has skipped building all units. Has gone straight reactor. Now that actually is great. I think because he can get two marines out. If he starts these marines, the second this finishes, the second this finishes, this. Oh no! He's building a depot. You got to get your marines up, or you're not going to be able to save the natural buddy. Oh, every second they're delayed. Now the zerglings are going to beat them there. If those zerglings can block these marines from getting in the bunker, that's going to be huge. Um, I think Corky is going to have to either cancel the low ground or is going to have to pull SCVs. These Marines, okay, the bunker finishes just barely. The bunker's barely finished. Is it enough? The Marines are going to come down to the low ground. They are going to get on down there. Guys, I just realized my mic volume was way up from where it normally is, so sorry about that. We've just adjusted that. Um, that was from being very quiet the other day and having a lot of drilling noises, which are not around. Is that four drones? Holy shit, guys. I didn't realize that before Captain Dickhead went on a one-way trip to harass the shit out of his opponents and make them rage, apparently he impregnated a lot of lava because he's got a lot of kids here all willing to also be dickheads and be as annoying as possible. The Zerglings are going to try and fight the bunker. Oh, they're kind of running into the choke point a little bit. That one drilly boy, he's trying to repair as hard as he can. These Marines killing a lot of Lings, but it's not enough. Oh, oh, raise the wall, raise the wall. Okay, there is a Hellion alive. That Hellion, though, was distracted on the high ground. Eeyore did not bring enough... You gotta, you gotta defend the ramp, buddy. Okay, that Hellion is about to roast. It's about to toast. And those Zerglings, realizing their folly, they do pull back. But there's more Zerglings pulling in the main. Eeyore going full douchebag right now. There's Hellions, Marines, and a Liberator on the way. If Corky can just keep this bunker alive, get more Marines in it, we'll be fine. But is not repairing the wall. These Marines are not in the bunker right now. Another bunker at the front is very important. These spines are gonna start coming through. Oh my god, even built drones these weren't even zerglings they're drones you psychopath eeyore hellion's not very good at actually taking out spine crawls that drone uh decides to dance around does eventually put that spine down uh, these marines need to go for the spines they need to stop targeting the hatch right now that queen she starts trying to find it she's going to come take on the hellion meanwhile ling's headbutting the front they're trying to burst through the queen taking out the hellion drilly boys pulling to repair Three of them pulling to the left-hand side. The Marines, the Hellion, fighting well. Guys, this is actually a pretty high-level game. The Hellion goes down. The Queen here, it's just Corky focusing on that hatchery too much. It was not as much of a threat. The spine crawl is moving forward. This one pervy boy says, I've got you guys. I'll provide high ground vision. And the big old tentacles start to thrust away Corky. Unfortunately, those Marines were not wearing a chastity belt. They do get deeply penetrated outside of wedlock. And oh no, a double dick in the back of the base as well. Even more Marines getting massacred, even though they are melting 
without any creep being down. That Marine goes down, a new creep tumor starts to fall. Zerglings get in the door, the SCVs go down. Corky, not like this. Oh no. That was an incredible build from Eeyore there. That was, how long did that go for? Five minute rush. Um, yeah, you gotta, you've got to pull back to the high ground. Like if your opponent's doing this sort of thing, it's crazy. A Liberator was about to see jump. I mean, if you just hold on to the wall, uh, you get a bunker at the front. You just, I mean, this bunker should have been closer to that hatch. And I think really, you know, should have just targeted those spines while they were building. But in the end, Eeyore uh, shows us some truly, truly beautiful play. And uh, GG, well played, mate. So for those who don't know, it was actually um, Zanster, who maybe a year and a half ago. I'm not sure. Can you guys remember when? Let me know. Um, he actually did a bronze to GM or like a, or, or I think it was just fresh account to GM. So platinum to GM um, without making gas. And basically every matchup was just him building forward hatcheries and rallying slow zerglings, queens, and trying to build spines in his opponent's base in all three matchups. And he made it to GM on NA uh, because everyone just wasn't used to fighting against it. And they were freaking the hell out. They couldn't handle it. They were like, what the fuck is going on, man? Um... So yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool because it's just such, you've got so much money because you're not investing in gas and most people just go, oh, this is bad and they just don't commit enough to defending it. But as long as you don't let them break in, those slow zergling was very weak. Those spines should never really get inside your base and, and you should be fine. But uh, does it, pulls it off and now we've got a Terran one. It's from Kill Kenny. My man says, I'm a big innovation fan. All right, Kill Kenny's going to bring the heat, bring some fire. And up here in the top left, the Protoss player, it's a zebra. Still a little bit upset about Brezit, um, but you know what? It's 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 not too bad. Zebra has retaken sovereignty. Is like, yeah, I'm not part of the Protoss Union anymore. I'm my own Zebra. I also have a little. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. Does anyone know what that is? I like the logo. It just looks like it's like a happy, excited Pac-Man or some shit. I don't fucking know. Um, this probe just having a little little stare. The Drilly Boy is gonna come out and say, "Hey, buddy, you want to fight? Do you want to taste my drill?" It's got some, got some chocolate on it. Come have a lick. The probe's like, uh, my father taught me not to lick a stranger's drill, no matter how tasty it looks. The SCV is like, you sure? You sure? I do want to fucking drill your face. Uh, the probe is going to get a full regen on shields. Nicely done. Zebra does take one little drill to the butt, though. That SCV is still hot on the tail. It looks like a one base opening from Kill Kenny. Said an innovation fan. Yeah, this is a one base TVP opening. Ooh, Inno has done one base Cyclone versus Protoss. One base Cyclone mine. So with this, normally you would build another factory pretty soon or even proxy it on the map and you would try to rally Widow Mines off one and Cyclones off the other. And you might even float a barracks, uh, your barracks after it's built both add-ons and use it to spot the high grace. So this could be, yeah. Oh, I love this. Yeah, I don't know if it was Innovation who did this the first time, but he definitely was using it most recently when they reverted the Cyclone um, at like Home Story Cup and stuff. It didn't really work that well. I'm not talking about the most recent Home Story Cup. I think it was two or three Home Story Cups ago. It was a while back when they changed the Cyclone back to the uh, fancy lock-on unit that it is. Second factory, Reactor. We don't have a Cyclone building yet. There is a Zealot here. And it's going to start to dice up this wall a little bit. Uh, for those who don't know, guys, the challenge for next week, it is going to be... You're playing the game wrong. Use a build from a different matchup. So basically play the wrong build order for the matchup. Depending on how how low level you are or how weird you are as a player, you might not even know builds from another matchup. Get creative and do some weird shit, I guess. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can play this. We're never strict. As long as the game is awesome, it's going to be good. I think this week we were a bit stricter just because, I mean, how hard is it to announce what player you're meant to be emulating? Like that's not hard at all. And yet everyone struggled with doing it. And so about three quarters of the replays didn't even didn't even they kind of got filtered out they got zoomed through it was like yeah it's it's not that amazing a game you're not going to get in um but normally you can be quite creative with how you do this and it can be really nice guys that he's, he's doing it the barracks is floating across we got a cyclone four scvs that are going to come to repair cyclones mines one base all in zebra is like uh i already lost me zealot uh fuck that's stalker <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, another one's around him. It's just like, this is like walking along the street and a guy's just punching you in the back of the head repeatedly. <laughs> You're like, can you stop, please? <laughs> we call that the coward punch. For those who don't know, the Cyclone is actually a coward punch unit. 
um, its whole thing is just running up behind people and punching them in the back of the head, but not hard enough to knock them out. It takes many punches. It just runs around behind you, fucking punching you in the back of their head. Remember, guys, you cannot outrun the fucking cyclone, man. That shit is scary. Oh, don't corner yourself. Oh, no. Kill Kenny. Might lose these cyclones. Oh, those stalkers survive. The cyclones cornering themselves, but they do have the two widow mines for safety. These, uh, these two little beautiful, beautiful set of Terran mechanical boobies. This is the safety zone, you know? Nothing feels like home like a pair of widow mines. There's a bunch of angry Protoss chasing you. That's the way to do it. The Cyclone's going to start picking off this natural. Waiting, of course, for the barracks to provide high ground vision. Needs to move that up there. Um, Immortals are out. Zebra needs a prism desperately and really should give up that expansion. You don't want to go in there. Zebra, you don't want to... No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Leave. Get back up your... What are you doing? Get out of... No, no, no. Don't do... Don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Oh, Zebra, get back up your ramp. You're, you're playing with fire right now. Um... Kilkenny forgot mag field, guys. There is no mag field accelerator. Very innovation style. Nah. Uh, two immortals, three stalkers. And you can tell that Zebra here has a boner. There's no reason to defend this area. It's already being killed. Pull back up your ramp and make a warp prism. If you get a warp prism, you can just pick up units whenever they get locked on, drop them out, break those lock-ons. The cyclones become very weak. You can also hot pick up units when the Widow Mines are tracking on. And that's also amazing. An Observer is going to start. That's going to be helpful. But look at this. Widow Mines on that side. Cyclones there. Another a tank is actually rallying across. And more Widow Mines. I mean, Kilkenny's being very careful here. Oh, this is... I think we're going to see a Widow Mine sandwich. I think we're going to see Cyclones and Mines come in from both sides. Right now, Zebra's just, just chilling. Charge is definitely the right call. Charge zealots wreck cyclones. The stalkers and the observer are going to come forward. They do pick off one widow mine. Uh, they're thinking about going for the other. They've got to be very careful of those lock ons. The mortals are going to come forward. Look for a little snipey snipe. Ooh, Zebra, you got to be careful though. You might get flanked here. And Kill Kenny's going to come forward. Those cyclones just turping. What are they doing? No! Kill Kenny, what was that? Did he F2? I think he might have F2'd his army, guys. I'm not sure. Oh, no. He just went to Dick Town. The tank. Oh, the Observer goes down. But, oh, he scans. I don't think he... I does get it with the other Widow Mine, but he loses the tank. Oh, my God. Both sides losing all their units. But, I mean, Zebra, I think, has, has better production here. Uh, Zebra just needs to keep building units. Warp Gate's finished. Has three gateways up. Is building more Immortals. This one fucking crazy Immortal pushing across the map. There is a Command Center, but it's only now starting... A liberator on the way could cause problems, but uh, Kill Kenny, they're getting the units a bit separated. I think needed to move those widow mines and tanks forward. Need to be really conservative on the left hand side and, uh, and 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 try to you know stay back. It's a scary position though. Zebra's Zebra's manwich um, was actually the the right way to play it. The widow mine <laughs> blasts the probe. So yeah, most people um, like they would follow the classic logic of it is always better to be the bread than the filling, right? You don't want to be the peanut butter with two pieces of your opponent's bread slapped around you. You don't want to be the salami in the middle of that sandwich. But Zebra said, I don't give a fuck. Cyclone is weak ass bread. It's that shitty flatbread that people on low carb diets get from Subway. You guys ever see that when places offer like those low carb, thin little flatbreads? They're like, oh, it's healthy for you. And it looks like the least appetizing thing ever. It's like, dude, if I wanted to slap some cardboard around the filling on my sandwich, I'd fucking go to McDonald's and buy some of their shit. I'm not gonna buy your fucking shitty flatbread, okay? Speaking of which though, Zebra was like, I'm the manliest filling of all time. Went in, the fucking shitty flatbread cyclone from the left got wrecked. Flatty, uh, flatty? Flatty, it's like shitty and flat. The same, I don't know. The sandwich on the right got, got dicked as well. Long story short, uh, Kilkenny uh, had some soggy bread. And uh, that's why you toast your sandwich before you grill it, guys. The stalkers do take out the widow mine, but that means they are way out of position for some freedom to rain down death and destruction. All the probes have to run to the natural. The stalkers have not reacted. Zebra's like, oh, I'll catch him on the retreat with these stalkers. <laughs> and then does a slow warp in. Oh my god, finally! The stalkers react. <laughs> I think Zebra is just freaking out because this game has been so weird. I think Kill Kenny's managed to break Zebra's brain a bit. Zebra's like, I'll chrono a phoenix and move stalkers here to deal with the liberators here. I'm like, is that the right way to do? Is that the right way to do it? Uh, once again, large brain players continue to private message me incessantly in, uh, in, in game chat. And you know what, guys? We're going to answer. Go to my Twitch and type Discord. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, Hellbats. Uh, Magfield starts at the nine minute mark. Uh, uh, two tanks. Oh, 
oh, the tanks died and get a good good few shots. But if those Phoenix just, I mean, I, how does Zebra possibly lose this game? Surely this is a loss for Kill. I can't imagine Kill Kenny makes it through. I can't go. That's why I asked. That's fine. Well, why don't you fucking just figure it out, mate? It's really not hard to open a Twitch chat. Um, people with large brains continue to astound me, guys. I was talking about how my chat is very special. The people who can't even make it to my chat, apparently a little bit more um, on the uh, genius scale. Uh, gonna come in here. I mean, that gets ravaged. What's this? Widow Mind Drop comes in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did he just kill 14 probes and we missed it? Guys! Where are all the probes? Oh my god! Okay, they got a, they got a few. The Widow Mind Drop. There's two more Widow Mind Drops up there. This, this has been lifted, though. He's gonna go... Banshees without cloak, tanks, and widow mines. So I think Kilkenny's interpretation of how innovation plays has gone a little bit off the rails at this point, Kilkenny. I think um, this looks a little bit more like what Ruff would do. It's like, you're like, I'm on one base versus three at the 10 minute mark. Maybe if I make Banshees and my opponent just kind of like brain farts, we can do it. The thing is, I've actually cast enough rough games at this point to know even at GM, it has a pretty high win percentage. So <laughs> as much as I make fun of it in theory, it's actually really quite fucking good. Uh, the Widow Mines do boost out of there. That Widow Mine is still alive. Zebra has not been chronoing probes at all. I think the Zebra's brain has broken, guys. Is microing to kill an SCV rather than putting workers back to mine? Let's go to Zebra's camera and watch an aneurysm. He's like, oh, put him back. 17 out of 8. And let's start building one probe at a time. Oh, no. Transfer. Oh, God. Is scrolling around as well. Can we... Oh, has only one Nexus control group and he's now gonna- Yeah, microing the army seems like the important thing to do right now, for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> Talk about all- You got your opponent on one base, you're on three, guys. How do you secure an advantage? You chrono probes from three bases, you spread them out optimally, and you fucking destroy your opponent a few minutes from now when your economy is infinitely bigger than theirs. Zebra has decided to stack 17 workers on four mineral patches and rally probes one at a time next to a gas geyser where they're allowed to have a permanent smoke break. If you need more proof that Protoss are basically just an inefficient corporate fucking hive mind, this here is it. I mean, you've got so many resources not being utilized. Most of the probe's job is to have an office job. And you're like, wait, what are you doing in the office? And they're like, I write the emails, and you're like, well, but like about what? And they're like, emails, like none of these probes actually knows what their function is. There's been so many layers of reorganization. They're all just kind of like, yeah, well, I go to conferences, conference calls, and I have the meetings. It's like, no, seriously, there is so much shit you could be doing if you had literally any initiative or responsibility. Uh, the probes are like, but I could continue to get paid while jerking off my friends. This here is what we call a fap circle, guys. It's like a Dutch rudder, but with rather than just two probes, it's a fucking, how many is that? Is that fucking 19 probes? Just, just fucking fapping each other. And now they're all gonna join. They're all gonna slide inside each other. You can notice this here is what we call the probe centipede. Something German uh, owners of dungeons are big fans of. Shout out to my German boys out there with dungeons who apparently like to force people to be stitched to each other. Good times. Uh, great classic movies. Best movie of all time, Human Centipede. Right up there with uh, all things that have made me want to fucking hurt myself. So after seven minutes of Zebra failing to reprobe or put the workers back on the mineral lines, Kilkenny on one base has built what I would describe as a huge fuck-off army that is about to brutally pound his opponent. Oh, he's got a clue! Yeah! Yeah! He's just move commanding! No! The Raven goes in! The Widow Mines are derping! The Banshees and Tanks are fighting! He might just barely have enough numbers. Uh, the sloppiest fight of all time, but it turns out sloppy's all you need. He just decides to fucking A-move on top of that army, um, slushies it and just, just dumps to Zebra, whose brain at this point is beyond broken. He was like, what is that opening? Handled it almost perfectly, and then br the brain broke. This is the beauty of StarCraft, guys. It's like, you can literally have a perfect reaction, get in an amazing position. I wouldn't say perfect, but pretty fucking good. And then you can just be so thrown off by how the game got to that point, and you just like fucking get too excited and stop playing your build order. And that is exactly what Zebra did in this game. It was like, oh, I killed his whole army on one base. I'm on two. And then like, just let a Liberator waste like a minute of mining time. Then let a Widow Mine drop, literally shut down three bases. Like one or two Widow Mines here, shut down three bases of mining for like seven minutes. I'm like, what? How did you let that happen? And Kilkenny's like, 
I'm pretty sure Kilkenny was like, I thought I was dead. <laughs> Honestly, when he made me lift my natural, I thought I might be fucked, but apparently he went to Nicktown. GG, well played, Kilkenny. I don't know how you won that game, but hats off to you for sticking with it, not throwing in the towel, um, and also trying out an awesome build order. I love that Widow Mine Cyclone all in. It's so awkward for the Protoss to defend. GG, well played, mate.